My name is Dan, and today I'll be talking about pre-rendering. So let's start off with a review. Single page apps is a concept that you would have learned about halfway through the term, uh, but as a refresher, they are basically a kind of web application where you only download a single HTML document. So this means that rather than using the browser to navigate through pages, you need to use JavaScript to request and handle responses without leaving the page. An example would, of this would be if you wanted to navigate to, say, the About page, rather than clicking About and having the browser uh, send a request back to the server, download the HTML, and then download further JavaScript and images, uh, what you would do instead is use a fetch API with JavaScript to the About route and re-render a select few components um, to display the about page that you want without actually leaving uh, the one HTML page that you started off with. So the advantages of this include uh, a faster postload performance, so once the HTML document has actually been downloaded, uh, any future pages uh, or transitions that you make are quite quick. Um, so yep, yeah, in the next advantage you can see, uh, it can do near instantaneous transitions between pages. So yeah, once the HTML page has been downloaded, it is quite quick. Uh, disadvantages also include poor initial load time. So because you need to download a lot of JavaScript, um, you might not see anything for a while if you have a slow network performance. Um, on top of this, browser support may not vary, so you can have different uh, versions of JavaScript existing on other people's uh, browser environments, so you will need to find a way to polyfill, polyfill and transpile all of your JavaScript. Um, and finally, and what I think most importantly, is that it gives you a terrible SEO. So more on this, uh, search engine optimization or SEO, it basically means how well web crawlers understand the contents of a website. So a good SEO basically means that your website will be ranked higher in search engines. Um, that is extremely important for any business, uh, be a small business or a large business, it gets you quite good exposure because most people find information through search engines these days. So for an SBA, the default HTML document is usually empty, meaning there is nothing in the body and you'll just have JavaScript uh, in script tags so any web crawler isn't going to be able to understand uh, what content is going to be loaded. And on top of that, any pages that the website has haven't been rendered by the JavaScripts yet. So it's unlikely that a web crawler is going to be able to uh, fully understand the important details of your website. Now, We've understood that this has been a problem for quite a while, and fortunately, there has been a solution. So this solution is called pre-rendering, and basically involves generating the HTML for each page in advance instead of having the client's browser do it. So each generated page includes the smallest amount of JavaScript needed for that page, and once the page is downloaded, the JavaScript that comes with it, runs, and it makes the page fully interactive. And this process is called hydration. So two benefits of pre-rendering. Firstly, it gives us better performance. And secondly, it gives us better SEO. So because there are HTML pages that have content with them, uh, it is more likely that a web crawler will understand what is going on, um, and it won't miss any important details for your website. There are two types of uh, pre-rendering. First is static generation, and the second is server-side rendering, and we'll be going through both. So firstly, static site generation, or SSG, involves pre-rendering at build time. Build time is basically a step in your deployment pipeline where you build your application. Effectively, uh, the HTML pages are compiled, if you will, once, and they can be distributed to different CDNs from there. So 
it's best practice to use uh, static site generation as much as possible because you only need to build your HTML pages once and from there it can serve heaps of users' requests. Generally, if the page uh, depends on external data, there are methods to uh, be able to that enable you to populate it. So pre-rendering isn't uh, disabled because of your dependency on external data. So I'll show you this later on in a demo. And yeah, the only case where you wouldn't use SSG is when there's external data that is frequently updating. So for example, you have a news API that updates every hour. Um, in this case, you would actually probably be better off having the client browser render it or use uh, SSR, which is server-side rendering. So yep, server-side rendering uh, basically means that it pre-renders every time the user makes a request. Um, this makes SSR slower than SSG because only one pre-rendered page will serve one user request. Uh, you'll need to rebuild the new HTML page every time a user requests that same page. So there will be double up if you use SSR. And because of the worse off performance, you probably shouldn't use SSR for pre-rendering unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, this basically means you probably won't use it often or use it at all. Now, Next.js is a very popular framework and it's got pre-rendering enabled by default. So one of the biggest advantages of Next.js is that it enables you to choose which type of rendering you want for every page that you have, B, Client-side SSG or SSR, it doesn't matter what type of rendering you have, it can do it all. And it gives you a lot of granularity and flexibility with that. On top of that, Next.js also has some pretty cool features. Uh, they include a intuitive routing system, CSS and JS, automatic code splitting, and fast refresh or hot loading. Cool, so now I'll go on to the demo. Uh, if you want more information or tutorials, please visit the Next.js documentation. In fact, a lot of the notes that I've made in this presentation are directly from that documentation. Uh, it's a really good resource, especially for anyone who's just starting out with the framework. For our demo, we're going to first create a Next.js app using the Create Next app uh, library. Essentially, all you need to do is have Yarn or NPM installed, and you just type Yarn create next app. So what this will do is install some packages for you, uh, basically the minimum amount of packages you need to have a functional Next.js app. The project we can call Next.js demo. and it will install all your packages quite quickly. And I'll just open this up in VS Code. Uh, you can see here on the left, there is the folder structure of the app. So create next app gives you these three folders. Uh, we'll start with the styles. That's basically a CSS folder. You can attach any CSS to it. And the public folder has all of your static files, uh, things like images and favicons go in here. And finally, here is the pages directory. Anything that is a route should go in the pages directory. Next.js will automatically create a route from that page. So for example, we see here the index.js fo uh, file, that is going to be the home root. You can see here, this is the home route, and we have the Next.js default page. And you can see the code for it is in here. Now the API folder is a special subfolder of the pages directory. Uh, basically any APIs that you have can go in here and, yeah. 
Now let's create an example component in the pages directory. Call it example. And if we just do something simple, export default. Oops. And we return the hello world. Example component come up here. Hello world. Now, if we stop the development server and build our application using yarn build, essentially what that's going to do is pre render all of our pages. So in this instance, since we have a example component here, what it should do is build a HTML page that includes this. And generally the build step is uh, a bit longer, takes a bit longer than using the development uh, server. So when you're developing, remember to use yarn dev rather than yarn build. So as you can see here, uh, Next.js essentially gives you a rundown of how each page slash component was rendered, um, pre-rendered. So this white dot next to the example root shows us that it was statically rendered. Uh, in this case, static rendering means no external data was fetched. So as you can see in our dot next folder, if we go to server, example.html, and we format this a bit. You can see in here, just in the body, the first line, there is our hello world line. Cool. So this uh, server folder slash the dot next folder will be served on different CDNs. Say we want our example component to fetch some sort of external data and uh, render it dynamically. How can we do this with Next.js? So first, let's just get a example API. Uh, so essentially this API will fetch some data from a user. Here we see that it's fetched some data from Canva. And let's use the name and the location uh, to display in this example component. So in order to get external data at build time, what we can do is export a function called um, get static props. So make it async. And we'll just grab our API. And pause it. Jason. Yep, so within this data struct, we can expect this object to be returned. Now, if we want to pass a uh, if we want to pass props to this example component, what we need to do is have get static props return a uh, props object. So what we would do is return something like this. And everything inside this object will be passed into example. So I said before we wanted to use name and location. Let's just do that. Uh, location. Yep, so get static props will pass this object into example. We can destructure like so. And now we can just print out a new component. Let's do hello. Uh, name how's the weather in location oh 
drop it in a div. There we go. Now, and ta-da. So as we can see, the get static props function has passed these props into this component. Now, if we wanted to build You can see here that our example component has changed the pre-rendered method. So because we're getting external data via an API, Next.js has uh, correctly assumed that we need to use a different pre-rendered method. In this case, it's decided to use a static generation, static site generation, because as we said before, this is probably the best way to do uh, pre-rendering. Now, what happens if we want to use server-side rendering? You can see here that this Lambda icon is used for the API hello. So maybe let's try getting it working for the example component. You can see here that get server-side props is all you need to actually enable server-side rendering. So if we replace get, service or get static props with get server-side props, and rebuild. You can see here that our example component has used server-side rendering for its pre-render method. And yeah, that's a basic rundown of pre-rendering and Next.js. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you learned something.